Hi, this is David. I wanted to share an insight that we generated in the forum in response to a customer's really great question of me. So this video for FRM or CFA candidates is not an introduction to the difference between these two lines. I'm going to assume you've already been exposed to the difference between the capital market line here, that's the CML on the left, and the security market line, that's the SML on the right. There's plenty of sources for that. What I want to do here is go one level deeper and explain or share with you what I think is the more profound difference between the two. And it's related to this question that was asked. And it's such a great question and it's uh, well written that I couldn't help but engage with it. Here's the question. If the CML plots well diversified portfolios and well diversified portfolios have no idiosyncratic risk, then isn't the CML also a plot of systematic risk, AKA beta? They even use the right term. It's systematic, not systemic in this context. Put another way, doesn't the CML already map to the SML? What a great question. My long-winded answer on the forum actually caused me to go and add a feature to the learning spreadsheet that we're looking at here. And I started my answer by saying, you are correct in the following sense. And I would like to now just um, see if I can explain that because I used the learning spreadsheet to uh, illustrate the difference. But first, what I have here is I've pushed below the fold a lot of the, several of the assumptions and then all of the computations just to keep this easier. So the only input I have here is a selection as to how much we choose to invest in the market portfolio. But for the sake of reproducibility here on the left, I have copied the assumptions that I happen to be using here for these plots. In the actual spreadsheet, they're all these are all changeable here on the left. But uh, of course, we have the classic two asset situation, very simple. We always start that way. It generalizes to more assets later, but assets A and B, and we're in the mean variance framework, of course. So that means assets only have an expected return and a variance or it's square root, the standard deviation. So in my case, I have a safer asset with expected return of 10% and volatility, aka standard deviation of 10%, and then a riskier asset with the expected return of 16% at the cost of higher volatility of 20%. And then I have the correlation that is Greek row here between the two assets of 0.3. So that is positive correlation, but far from imperfect correlation. And so then the spreadsheet does the rest, all of the rest of the work and the plotting, including here, I'll show you just briefly some of the detail, including of course here in light green or bright green, what we call the portfolio possibilities curve, right? It's nonlinear in any situation where that correlation is imperfect. And then I added two points on the green line the light dot here, you can, you probably already know, is the minimum variance portfolio. And so that's the easy one to solve for. And I can see here in my calculations that its standard, its volatility is just about 9.8%. And so already we see the magic of diversification. And really after all these years, it's still, it's still sort of marvelous to me or magical to me. Because because notice, well, it's all the way over to the left. So this is our, our, our safest portfolio if we want to lower the standard deviation. But you'll notice at 9.8%, it's lower than the lowest volatility of the safer asset. So really the free lunch of diversification is illustrated right there. The harder one to solve for, but that is solved for in my spreadsheet is the so-called market portfolio. I know it's a stretch because we only have two assets, but I think you know what I mean. And that is the red triangle. How? Why is it the market portfolio? Well, it's the most efficient. And by most efficient specifically, we mean the highest sharp ratio. So we're not talking, I'm not talking yet about the straight line, just the portfolio possibilities, the bright green, non-linear line, right? Before we add any risk-free asset, that line, we can think about it being sliced horizontally at the minimum variance portfolio. 
such that the upper section is concave, the lower section is convex, right? Concavities, because I can, if I draw, if I connect any two points, it's underneath the line, within the line. The efficient segment is always concave, right? And it dominates any of, the, any, of the, any of these dominates, any of these portfolios in the upper concave segment are efficient. They dominate or more efficient. They dominate any of the portfolios in the lower segment. So there is in that upper concave segment a reasonable trade-off we make between higher return at the cost of higher standard deviation as we move up to the right. But the choice with the highest sharp ratio is right here at the red triangle, and I can see that dynamically it's solved for, it's uh, 56, it's almost 57% of the safer asset A, and so uh, the rest are uh, almost half in the riskier asset B, and this is the sharp ratio. I don't really mean to have any percentages, but um, of 0.56 is the highest sharp ratio right here at the purple, at the, the red triangle, excuse me. And so, right, remember, all of the portfolios on the green line are risky assets only. And then the CML, as you probably know, the easiest way to think about the CML, the capital market line, is that we make the market portfolio the point of tangency. Right, and the point of tangency is anchored over here at the risk-free asset. That's why even I don't even show it, but I know that because this is the capital market line, my y-intercept must be the return on the risk-free asset of six percent. I only need that point, and then I just need to call the market portfolio the point of tangency. Those two points define for me the carp the capital market line. So now that we've introduced the risk-free asset, we say now the capital market line is most efficient. And it's interesting because the sharp ratio of the market portfolio, which is highest among all of the risky assets, is the sharp ratio also of any of the portfolios on the capital market line. So it immediately becomes most efficient and the investors can all get the same sharp ratio. They have just a decision to make. Do they want to move up the line here, that's up to the right, by uh, borrowing at the risk-free rate and taking on leverage, right? So borrowing at the risk-free rate. I have here 150%, meaning bar uh, borrow 50% at the risk-free rate and invest that all into the same market portfolio, so add leverage. or if we're more risk averse and conservative, we move down here to the left, what do we do there? Well, in this case, maybe down here, we are uh, investing in the risk-free rate or lending at the risk-free rate. So maybe right about here, only 50% is going in the market portfolio and the remainder is being uh, invested or lended, lent at the risk-free rate. So now, it took me a little while. I'm going to move this out, and now I'm going to really get to the point. And the point here, the feature that I added is these is the horizontal line and this choice here to invest at the market portfolio. So I've currently got 150%, but notice I can turn it up to 160% or any number. I'll put it back to 150%. And so along the capital market line, again, these investors, all investors, homogeneous expectations have really, it's only a two asset allocation decision. Either put it in the risk-free asset or put the rest in the market portfolio only. By doing so, in theory, they maintain a perfectly well-diversified portfolio that is also most efficient. So that's why I will say that Efficiency and diversification or well diversification are really matters of degree. So the only, if we take here at the 16% expected return, this horizontal line, it's only this first dot that's on the CML that is truly well diversified and most efficiency efficient, or in other words, it shares the same sharp ratio as the market portfolio. But I also, what I did, the feature that I added is I've also just carried this line over and plotted the second dot 
horizontally with the same expected return that's on the PPC, right? This is interesting. Both of these portfolios operate in this space and have the same expected return. This portfolio to the right, though, it is less efficient, is it not? Because for the same expected return, I have I can get this portfolio with less risk. So why wouldn't I choose it? Well, no good reason, really. This this but this portfolio here is on, is a combination of only the risky assets and is on the PPC. And it's been applied parameters here. I show here also. So these dynamically render. And what we see here is this portfolio has systematic risk of 17.5% and then specific risk of 9%. That's the breakdown of their of the total risk of this portfolio here at the right of 19.7, right? So that's the total risk here is the standard deviation of this uh, less efficient portfolio that, that returns 16%. And the, it's greater than the risk of this efficient portfolio where the difference is the specific risk. They aren't additive, right? Because it's a function of uh, summing squares. So won't get into detail of that, but uh, you can take a closer look as to seeing why they're not additive. But this is the breakdown. So what we see here is that this portfolio possibilities curve incurs this extra specific risk. And this explains why it is this portfolio is truly well diversified. This portfolio is imperfect, is not truly well diversified. It has some specific risk that contributes to a higher standard deviation yet earns the same expected return. So I come over to the security market line and show the same expected return, but this time as a function of the beta. So how does that work? Well, I'll show you mathematically how that works or how we can look at it, right? Because I'll start with expected, I'll just say expected return. They're going to share that in common at 16%. And let's just see if I already lost my draw with touch. And I'm going to say that's equal to, but I want to move this out. I get that out of the way. I am going to say that's equal to the risk-free rate plus, now over here on the capital market line, uh, it's, it's the excess return on the market is how I'm going to represent that. I'm going to keep it a little simple divided by volatility or standard deviation of the market multiplied by standard deviation of the portfolio. So you can see here is the capital market line. And this term is the sharp ratio of the market, right? Excess return of the market divided by volatility of the market so that the standard deviation of the portfolio is the x-axis. So this only the only characterizes the straight capital market line. Now to get over to the security market line, I'm going to do something very simple. I'm just going to multiply by the correlation. So that's my Greek row between the portfolio and the market multiplied by an identity. That's going to help me get over there. Uh, sigma standard deviation of the market divided by standard deviation of the market. So that's an identity of one. Could, and that's all I need to do to get over, get myself over to the security market line because now I'm going to have the risk-free rate plus the excess return on the market. So we can also call that the uh, equity risk premium. And then I'm just going to collect the rest of my terms, right? Sigma of the market, sigma of the portfolio, and correlation between the portfolio and the market divided by I'm gonna I need my uh, I now have two sigmas for the market so that uh, I end up with the security market line and of course candidates 
FRM candidates and CFA know that this here is my beta and it simplifies, right? I can cancel by, I can cancel one of the uh, Sigma markets to get portfolio or a correlation between the portfolio and the market multiplied by, I want to make sure to put Sigma the portfolio on top and Sigma of the market on bottom. So that's my favorite definition of beta right there. It's correlation multiplied by cross volatility. And so we can, we can really, we truly can say that beta is a volatility adjusted correlation of the portfolio to the market. But I'll, I'll just stay down here and show you to emphasize the fact that the a member of our forum asked that question, does the CML map to the uh, SML? Well, the answer is yes, it does in a sense. Both of these portfolios, in a sense, map over to the SML here at 16%. How is that? Well, only one of them, the one on the CML, is truly well diversified. I, I got my uh, chart area showed up there. I don't like that. I want to get that over. Let me move that. And that's in this correlation parameter right here. So the truly the, the portfolio that's on the CML has a correlation of one, right? And that's how that's how the one here and the one here cancel both of these out for my truly well diversified portfolio and I'm on the CML. But the other portfolio here that has specific risk it has a correlation of less than one. So its correlation is lower. And I think on my spreadsheet, it's, uh, it's actually about 0.89. So it's, uh, uh, again, correlation between the portfolio and the market. And as we showed, its, port, its, port, its volatility is higher. So, and that's going to be the case all the way here. It is going to be a sort of ne netting out, so to speak. You know what I mean? a little uh, sort of cancellation in the sense that any of these portfolios map over the SML. It's just the, fa it's just the fact that the ones that are fall off the CML, they have lower correlation and higher volatility. And this is just um, to mathematically illustrate what I think is the more profound difference here, right? We, we say, we study superficially that the CML, it, it superficially, and this is a, a fine way to memorize it, don't get me wrong, the CML plots as a measure of risk on its x-axis, the risk, the total risk or standard deviation of the portfolio, while the SML plots only the systematic risk of the portfolio, which is really the portfolio, uh, the portfolio's quantity of risk or exposure to the common factor, which is the market's excess premium, excess return. Of course, that's true. However, the CML, here's the profound distinction. The CML is a plot only of the most efficient portfolios that are truly well diversified. Whereas we've now shown, we come over here we can actually map any of them or horizontally carry them over, if you like, to the SML, which is a plot of any portfolio, efficient or not, including the less efficient portfolio, and which is picked up here, actually parametrically, is really picked up here in that correlation that decreases as that portfolio becomes well diversified, becomes less well diversified. And if that, if that part sounds odd, again, that's because in this case, it's the correlation between the portfolio and the market. And sort of counterintuitively, we say that true, a truly well diversified portfolio has a correlation of one with the market portfolio. So CML, map of only efficient portfolios. SML is a plot of expected return for all portfolios because it assumes that the only thing that matters is the portfolio's quantity of risk, its systematic risk, its exposure with respect to the common factor. So I hope that is a helpful deep 
dive. I found it interesting. I thought the question was really great, and I'm grateful that we um, was able to add this feature to the spreadsheet. Thank you very much.